Welcome into Let's Be Honest, you guys. I'm your host, Kristen Cavallari, and today's episode is going to be extremely informative when it comes to all things health. We are talking to Dr. Ryan Monahan, who happens to be my doctor. Hi. Hi. So it's so funny because we've been working together for almost two years, but this is the first time that we're meeting in person. Yes. All of our appointments have been on Zoom. Yeah. which I think is great for everybody at home. You guys can all make appointments with Dr. Monahan, which we will say the website and everything at the end. Um, but I'm so excited to chat with you about health stuff because I'm very passionate about health, as I know you are as well. So you practice both functional and Eastern medicine. Explain what that means. Yeah, so they're both root-based um, holistic approaches to medicine. So Eastern medicine comes out of, you know, like traditional Chinese medicine, herbs, lifestyle, diet, acupuncture, things like that. And then functional medicine follows that, but with a more Western approach. So it's all heavy labs, right? Lots of advanced uh, lab work. You know, you, you go to your conventional doctor, you get some basic, you know, complete blood count, metabolic panel, and they tell you everything looks good, mm -hmm. but everything's not good, right? right? So functional medicine goes far deeper. Uh, the lab testing we do is far more elaborate and in-depth. And then we treat in a different way as well. We use different metrics to analyze health. And um, at least I take a different approach, non-pharmaceutical approach. So everything I do is natural, you know, supplemental base, herbs, botanicals, minerals, vitamins, nutrients, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting to the root of the cause instead of just covering it up and then having five other things go wrong as well. Yeah, exactly. Which I love. Um, so I th would imagine that a lot of people go to you initially because they have something serious going on in their lives. But for other people like me, it was more about optimal health. So do you have the same protocol for both types of people when they come to you? Or if someone is having something specific going on, do you just try to focus on that? Yeah, I get a range of people, uh, th those who have seen every doctor under the sun and gotten nowhere and they're still sick and they've been chronically ill for years. And then people like you who are more like, what can we do to tweak things and just improve things a little bit more? Um, I have a group of core tests I run on pretty much everybody, and mm -hmm. then I'll modify that based on what they're coming to me for. So I might add things in. If you're coming for a specific you know, autoimmune disease or something, I might add certain markers to explore that further. But uh, yeah, I've got a group of maybe four to six tests I start everybody out with. Mm -hmm. And then we treat for like three to six months and usually make good progress there. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we have to dig deeper. It just depends on the patient. Okay. That is one thing that I love so much about your practice is all of the tests that you do. I've seen a million doctors in the past, and I feel like they only do hormones and food sensitivity, which I think is just one piece of the puzzle. Mm. You really focus on the gut, which I think makes a lot of sense. But the one thing about these tests is that they can be they can be really expensive. So if someone could only do one test, let's say, which one would you recommend? You just answered okay. it, the gut, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's always where we start in functional medicine. Gut's the foundation of health. Um, Hippocrates, all disease begins in the gut. They knew yeah. that a long time ago, and it's more uh, truer today more than ever. So uh, probably probably a, a stool test, actually. And okay. most people aren't running stool tests, no. you know, conventional doctors. And if you do go to like a gastroenterologist for, you know, any gut related thing, they'll run a stool test often, but it's pretty basic. They're looking for kind of extreme disease. Right. The GI testing I do, the stool test I run, it's, it's very comprehensive, more in depth, more functional, looking at the physiology of your gut, how it's functioning, not just for like parasites, but so much more. So much more. Well, like one thing that I didn't even know what it was is C that was a test that I, that you had me do, which stands for small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And I mean, in a nutshell, and you could answer this better than I can, but it because I had it, it was messing up all these other things in my body. Like I wasn't absorbing my nutrients and like who knows how long that had been going on for. So really, I was wasting all this time, energy and money on supplements that I was taking, right? Like, is that fair to say? Yeah. So it's not always what you eat, but what you absorb. And that extends to supplements too. Yeah. So if you have SIBO and it blocks absorption, um, you could have the perfect diet and take all the supplements on earth, but you're not absorbing them. Right. Right. I feel like I got it when I was pregnant with my second son, which he's nine now. So this is a long time ago because, um, I started getting little bumps on my thighs, which I've talked to you about. And because I was pregnant, I chalked it up to hormones, but then they just never went away. And I can say now, which I've told you, they're completely gone because we've gotten my gut in check. So it just goes to show you, I do feel like everything is gut related. It is, especially <laughs> skin issues. Any Anytime somebody comes with a skin issue, 
Uh, we got to look at the gut. We got to look at your detox and your nutrients, right? Mm-hmm. So if you fix the gut, you get the nutrients coming in. You start to clear out the bad stuff, bring in more of the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you're big on diet, which yes. I am too. I think we both agree that you can basically use food as medicine. What type of lifestyle do you recommend when it comes to the way someone eats? Uh, in a word, paleo. That's okay. like the most accessible starting point for most people. So that's going to be meat, fish, vegetables, fruit, nuts, and seeds. Um, and then taking out all the more challenging things to digest that are often inflammatory. So things like gluten, grains, dairy, alcohol, caffeine, sugar, all the processed stuff. packaged <laughs> food, vegetable oils, all the good stuff. Oh. Everything that the processed, pa- processed packaged foods are made out of. What about even like um, goat cheese or sheep milk cheeses and stuff like that? Those, Those are good because they tend to have almost no lactose. And for some okay. people, lactose is an issue. Plus, the sourcing for sheep and goat is probably usually better than cow's milk. Okay. And some people do tolerate dairy, but I'd say it's maybe one third of people. Um, by and large, uh, you know, I do some food immunology testing and most people do come back with inflammatory markers to dairy. So mm-hmm. it depends on the person. Some people thrive with like raw dairy if you're sourcing yeah. that. Is that what you do? So I can get it at my farmer's market. Um, yeah. I It still kind of messes up my stomach, but my kids love it and I feel like they can tolerate it. Yeah, you have more of the lactase when you're younger that breaks down lactose oh, and okay. uh, kids tend to deal with milk a bit better. Okay. As we get older, often those uh, enzymes go away. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. Um, All right. I want to talk about supplements. Obviously, if someone can do all of your tests, it's great because then you know exactly what someone needs to be taking. But like we said before, they can be they can be expensive. Or if someone just doesn't have the resources to do these tests without having that full body picture, what are supplements that you would recommend for somebody? Yeah, it's a good question. And the, the central thing about what I do is it's targeted, right? So we are running that test, the organic acids test, to look at all your nutritional values. And then we're giving you lots of the things you need and mm-hmm. none of the things you don't. So it's really specific. But, you know, everybody's deficient in something. And right. most people are deficient in multiple things. So some generally good things, uh, B-complex would be okay. good for pretty much everybody. Even if you don't need it, you're you're peeing it out if, if you have any excess. Okay. Vitamin D, pretty much everybody's deficient. Yeah. Magnesium, most people are deficient. Um, and then there's different types of magnesium, right? Yeah, so lots. Lots. So what type should everyone be taking? I, I generally start with glycinate. That okay. one is well absorbed and well tolerated by most people. Okay. Um, it's bound to glycine, which is an amino acid that most people benefit from as well. So I'll start there. Um, magnesium citrate can be good. Three and eight can be good if you have cognitive issues. It's the only magnesium that crosses the blood-brain barrier. Oh. So it just depends on what you're trying to solve. But generally speaking, magnesium glycinate would be good. Okay. And then like antioxidants, like vitamin C, are some of those important too? Yeah, I too? mean like I mean, all of the stuff, yeah, honestly. I know. I know. Like glutathione. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Speaking of antioxidants. Yeah. And glutathione, explain that for people who don't know what glutathione is. Well, the first thing you think of with glutathione is the master antioxidant. So like that's the big guy, right? Okay. Um, Protects all cells from oxidative stress and inflammation. Okay. So everybody has a lot of oxidative stress and inflammation. That's the root of a lot of people's chronic disease in this day and age. So glutathione every day uh, for most people would really be protective. Okay. And then what about supplements for kids? Because I would love to do all these tests on my kids, but there's just no way. (laughs) But is it the same for them or because they haven't had as many years of, let's say, damage to their bodies? Is it slightly different? I do work with some kids, not as many as adults, but um, sadly, a lot of the kids I've run these tests on are in worse shape than adults. And oh, God, that it's, freaks me out. I always think I'm going to get these tests back and I'm like, oh, they're fine. They're yeah. like six years old, right? But they're really bad. Oh, and shoot. that's sad. But then I know that we're going to make a lot of improvement in their life by making some simple changes. So yeah. uh, you can do these tests on kids. But, um, you know, generally there are some like uh, kid friendly supplement lines like Gaia has one. You yeah. can look at that line and there's other ones out there. But you know, all that stuff. Omega threes for kids are really great. Okay. Vitamin D, B vitamins, magnesium. Okay. All the all the antioxidants. What about like a just a regular probiotic? Is that good for kids? Depends, right? So probiotics are generally good, but in my experience, most people have overgrowths in the gut. Yeah. And you treat those with antimicrobials, which is the opposite of a probiotic. So okay. um, it's more about clearing out the bad stuff and then bringing in the good stuff after the bad stuff's gone. So like a lot of those kids tests I'm running have tons of like yeast and fungal overgrowth. Really? Really high amounts, like 
extraordinary high amounts. And where are they getting that from? The food that they're eating? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, anything sugary is going to feed yeast and fungus like crazy. Thinking about my kids right now. <laughs> and people, like kids won't have anything that doesn't, ha- if it doesn't have sugar, they won't eat it, right? So that's a part of it. Oh no, now I'm like, I feel like I feel like I need to do this on my kids. Well, <laughs> it would be easy because a lot of these you can just do with a urine sample. So if the oh, kid, really? Yeah, if the kid can't do a blood, I do blood draws for some kids, but yeah. if they can't do that, you can do a finger prick or you can just do okay. urine. So you're not doing like the breath test for the kids where you have to like blow into the tube because my kids would be like, I'm not doing this for three hours. Totally. You know? I've, I've tried and that's, and I all the parents are like, yeah, that should be fine. It's just blowing. <laughs> yeah. Like 75% of the time I get an email three weeks later, we can't do the breath yeah, test. Yeah, there's no Even way. The adults, it's hard. I know. I think I had to redo it like three times one time. You did, I think. I'm sorry. It has to be like so perfect. No, but I mean, it's worth it. It's worth it. Okay, if you could only tell someone to eliminate five things from their life, whether that be food, um, in their home, whatever, what would those five things be and why? Such a good question. And Uh, I know it's hard to limit it to five. It's so hard. (laughs) I could just do five foods. Um, (laughs) Honestly, so so I don't know if these counts as two, but gluten and alcohol, I think, are the worst things for most people. (sighs) Um, Stress. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Get rid of stress as much as you can. It's obviously hard to do that. Um, go through everything in your home and get rid of the toxic stuff. There's a lot of chemically things that are yep. in our home, we're breathing in all the time. Cleaning supplies. Cleaning supplies, personal care products. Yeah. Women are putting on like 112 chemicals a day or something. With cosmetics, right? Cosmetics. And lotion. And yeah. Like, so, yeah. you know, Think Dirty app or Environmental Working Group to evaluate that stuff. Okay. Um, Branch Basics, I know yeah. that you use. I just did an app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I mentioned I use them. I use them yeah. for my laundry. So They're great. And dishwasher, actually. Yep. Yeah. So... Um, yeah. And then set boundaries as much as you can. Okay. Right. To help with stress. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. A brand that I always love talking to you guys about is Branch Basics. They are non-toxic, free of fragrance, hormone disruptors, and harmful preservatives. They're baby kid and pet safe, clean and cost-effective cleaning supplies. I have completely switched over all of my cleaning supplies to Branch Basics, and I can't say enough good stuff about them. Their premium starter kit replaces all of your toxic cleaning products in your home. Branch Basics now offers a new gel hand soap. It's non-toxic, fragrance-free, and great for sensitive skin. The hand soap is crafted with healthy ingredients like aloe, chamomile, and meadow foam oil to soothe and hydrate skin with every wash. If you suffer from eczema, allergies, or asthma, make the switch to Branch Basics. My favorite thing about Branch Basics, you guys, is that what they do is once you get all of your supplies, all of your bottles, then all you have to do is get their concentrate. So what you do is you can then fill up each bottle on its own and then you mix it with water. So it just makes it really easy and you're not constantly dealing with a million bottles. I love having peace of mind, having three dogs and three kids that everything in my home is clean and non-toxic. Save 15% on your starter kit or their new hand soap when you use code Let's Be Honest at www.branchbasics.com. Again, that's code Let's Be Honest for 15% off when you purchase a starter kit. Again, that's Let's Be Honest at www.branchbasics.com. Okay, dog owners, let's talk about the farmer's dog, which is my favorite dog food. This new year, the easiest healthy habit to start is one for your dog. The farmer's dog makes feeding real healthy dog food easy and convenient, and your dog will absolutely love it. You guys, my dogs are obsessed with the farmer's dog. They gobble it up in literally two seconds. It's smart, healthy pet food you can feel good about feeding your pup. That's why it's time to quit the kibble, kick the cans, and start fresh. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food right to your door. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real meat and veggies to the safety standards of human food. It's the best option for dogs of all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real healthy food. Traditional dry and wet dog food options are highly processed, can use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to, and are extremely difficult to portion accurately. The farmer's dog isn't just fresh, higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. Dogs at a healthy weight can live up to two and a half years longer than overweight dogs. A fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits from healthier coat and skin to better breath, even easier digestion and smaller, better poops. 
Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash honest. In the spirit of being honest, let me tell you guys about a brand that I absolutely love, which is Primal Kitchen. In all the hustle and bustle of being a busy mom between shuttling the kids to different practices, work, exercise, and checking off my endless mommy to-do list, there's not a moment to spare. And that's why I'm so grateful for Primal Kitchen. They make it easy to whip up a delicious family meal that even my kids, who can sometimes be picky eaters, will love just as much as I do. I am constantly using their avocado oil and my pantry is always stocked with their delicious dressings and sauces. Primal Kitchen products are made with honest ingredients you can trust, like avocado oil. Primal Kitchen products have real, delicious, bold flavor that the whole family will love. They make cooking family meals easy. With just one bottle or jar from your pantry, you can instantly add flavor to any meal. Primal Kitchen has a lot of products that are no dairy, gluten-free, and made without cane sugar, corn syrup, artificial sweeteners, or seed oils, so you can definitely fit your family's individual needs. You guys know that I only promote brands that I absolutely love and I use Primal Kitchen all the time. I'm also obsessed with their mayonnaise. That is the only mayonnaise I will use because of the better ingredients in it. You can find Primal Kitchen at Target, Walmart, and your local grocery stores. I personally stock up on mine at Whole Foods. And if you want to save 20% off your entire online order, head to primalkitchen.com and use my code HONEST at checkout. Okay, I wanted to discuss the sun and sunscreen, which I know is controversial. I don't wear sunscreen. And anytime I do an interview, I get a lot of shit when I admit that I don't. So talk to me about the health benefits of the sun and why we maybe don't need sunscreen. Totally. It's a very (laughs) controversial topic, which is so funny because it's the sun. Like we've literally spent our whole existence as humans under the sun all day until the last like hundred years or so. And now we're like shut ins, spend 93% of our lives indoors. That's really bad for a lot of reasons. The sun is life giving and nourishing. However, we are living quite an inflammatory lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that makes it really hard. Remember, I was talking about everybody has high levels of oxidative stress and inflammation. So when you're internally inflamed, the sun can kind of aggregate that and you don't have the antioxidants you don't have the reservoir of antioxidants to combat that potential for oxidative stress, right? So okay. if you live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, you take a lot of antioxidant supplementation and you work up your base coat in the sun, you can start to tolerate the sun instead of burning, right? So it's not saying just go from zero to hundred and spend five hours in the sun. Right. Like every spring I start with like five minutes in the sun, work up to like oh, okay. 10 minutes, 15, and then I build that. And by the end of summer, I'm in the sun for like the whole day without any sunscreen or, or anything like that. Amazing. Yeah. Astaxanthin is the, is the um, antioxidant that is specific to the skin and that can help. It's like an internal sunscreen. Cool. Yeah. And coconut oil too, right? Can you use that as sunscreen? Oh, I don't know, actually. I've I suppose you can. That. I don't do that personally. Um, you could definitely consume coconut oil because it's very anti-inflammatory yes. in that way. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then I actually saw recently you said that um, for sunspots on your face, you can use glutathione directly yeah. on it, which I thought was such a great tip. Yeah. I love that. So just any kind of glutathione that you take you can also put on your face. Yeah, I prescribe liposomal glutathione, which is a liquid in liposomal form. It's better absorbed. So taking it internally and then applying it topically as well. Okay, cool. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about EMFs. And oh, unfortunately, yeah. I feel like a lot of people still don't even know what they are, what that stands for. So what are they? Where are they coming from? And what's the damage that they're doing to us? Well, now they're everywhere. Right now, <laughs> everywhere. Electromagnetic, yeah, right? So, um, yeah. uh, Cell towers, cell phones, computers, microphones, lights, uh, electricity. Um, Yeah, it's all around us. And that's another controversial topic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some people that's like, if you wear, if you think that you probably like wear tinfoil hats to, it's funny, (laughs) I I was literally looking at hats last night that block EMF on online. I would buy those. I would buy them. And I was like, oh, this is like the modern day tinfoil hat. But, um, (laughs) but it's a, it's a very real thing and it can exacerbate a lot of people who have weakened immunity. I work with a lot of mold and mycotoxin patients and they're very sensitive to EMFs. Like they can't even hold a cell phone in their hand 
You know what? It's crazy. If I'm on my phone more than usual, my whole yeah. arm kind of gets like a little tingly. Me too. It freaks me out. Yeah. <laughs> like I can feel it. If you're a sensitive person, you can feel that effect. And I'll like put it down and be like, okay, yeah, need, to, need to take a break. Yeah, it I have them. Um, I've got two stickers on my computer. Yeah. I'll show you what I carry with me at all times too. I, you know, it's easy to like get wrapped up in this stuff. And then all of a sudden you're like living your whole life by it. But I have this blue shield, nice. like portable EMF blocker. But and I've had to learn to let go a little bit because otherwise you're like, I find that like I'm just driving myself crazy, like becoming obsessed with it. Yeah. But I do think it's important. I've got EMF blockers all over my house. I got my kids the watches like I put them in their backpacks. I I'm a huge believer that we should be doing everything that we can to combat this stuff. Yeah. Another place I learned that has really high EMFs is the Bluetooth headphones. Oh, yeah. Why are those so high and why are, why is that so dangerous? Well, it's just emitting a stronger frequency to, to do what it's trying to do. So I do all of my uh, appointments online and I use these headphones and I have them hardwired so that decreases it. At home, you can hardwire your Wi-Fi or at least turn it off at night. At night. Like you don't need it on when you're sleeping. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like so much more you can do for your home. You can get these canopies that like drape over your bed and block oh, all the cool. EMF. You can paint your walls with this I've, EMF blocking I've paint. I've seen that. Yeah. I've, trust me, I've thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So there's a lot you can do there. Some people are more sensitive than others. And if you're somebody who is sensitive, they're worth doing. Okay. Okay. And it's damaging you at a cellular level. Yeah. Right. So even if you don't see it or like have symptoms, it still is probably affecting you. Yeah. The thing is, in this day and age, it's not really one thing. It's the accumulation of hundreds or thousands of things. So if you talk to somebody who's a skeptic, they'll be like, What's the big deal about a little, a little EMF? What's the big deal about a little chlorine, a little fluoride, a little right. this, a little that? It's it's not the one thing in small amounts. It's many, many, many things that add up. And right. You have to do everything you can in your power and control to mitigate what you can. Right. Okay, exactly. I love really tangible small tips. And one that you gave me, which I love, is when you're pumping your gas Mm -hmm. to sit inside of your car. Yeah. Why did you tell me to do that? There's a compound we test for, um, MTBE, that is um, an additive to gasoline. And uh, it came up a little high, I think, in your test. And it comes up (laughs) high in many people's tests, uh, especially those who've lived in cities. It accumulates in your tissues. Um, so it's one small thing, like you said, but like, it's all these small things adding up that make a difference. So rather than putting the nozzle in your car and standing there (laughs) smelling smelling the fumes, (laughs) and I know a lot of people like the smell of gasoline, right? I kind of do too. It makes me think of like being on the lake or something, (laughs) but then, um, uh, you're breathing that in. Right. right? And so why not sit in your car and it's a little less, uh, a little, little less exposure there. Okay. What are some other just easy, small tips like that, that we can be doing to eliminate eliminate toxins. Oh, yeah. So uh, starting in your home, like we talked about, the EPA estimates that indoor air pollution is two to five times higher than outdoor air pollution. And we spend 93% of our lives indoors, right? So that's a big place for improvement, like air filtration in your home. Air doctor. Air doctor is a good one. Yeah, I have one. Um, And then IntelliPure is a good one. And Molecule, those are a few good ones. I have like six air filters in my home running at all all times. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So that's a good thing to do. And then everything you buy and put in your home should be organic and non-toxic if you can. Okay. Okay. Bedding, sheets, towels, your clothing, 100% natural fibers. I know. All your cleaning supplies, all your personal care products. Like all this adds up. I know. It's a lot of information. I mean, it can be overwhelming for sure. I do this like for my (laughs) career. It's all I do all the time. So like I... I'm always in that world and I sometimes forget other people have like their whole entire life <laughs> and they have to fit this all in, right, right? right? It is a lot. It is a lot, but I, I agree. I think it's worth it. Well, in the health world, it seems like every day there's a new trend. So what is something that's just completely overrated and not worth the hype? Oh, <laughs> um, juice cleanses. <laughs> okay. God, and I used to do them all the time in my I, early 20s. I did too. You Same did? in my early 20s. Yeah. yeah. So I got on board for all the health trends in my early 20s when I tried to get healthy. So I went raw vegan and oh, I was wow. like juicing all the time, yeah. like doing all these things that are, I've come to learn actually quite depleting. So juicing is um, tasty and fun and mm-hmm. colorful. And people will do like a five day juice cleanse and all that stuff. And they might feel better because they're taking out all the junk that they're eating. Right. But juice removes all the fibrous uh, material from the like the cellulose from the vegetables and fruit that feed your healthy bacteria. And then it just isolates the sugars and the sugars are feeding the fungus, the yeast and the bad bacteria. Should I not be doing juices in the morning? I wouldn't. Holy shit. Are you serious? I, I do. I try to do one every morning. What are you putting in there? 
I change it up. I mean, I do like a typical one for me is, OK, celery, cucumber, cilantro, ginger, lemon, apple. I like that because it's less fruit heavy. Um, it's more vegetables. It's more vegetables. Yeah. So if you're going to do it, that's the better approach. But I'm big on protein and healthy fats for breakfast. Okay. So any animal protein, any healthy fat. I have like a ground turkey thing with like avocado and like almond butter and cacao usually for breakfast. That's just okay. what I do right now. But okay. um, having a bunch of sugars in the morning, even if it's from vegetables and fruits, um, isolated in a juice, that's going to kind of mess with your blood sugar and cortisol levels in the morning. I mean, oh, I'm so sad. But you <laughs> can mean, still do I also it. Do, but... I do. Like I'll do that first thing. And then I'll usually do coffee and then I'll do eggs and maybe maybe bacon, maybe avocado or I'll do like an egg bowl with like sauteed spinach and maybe some goat feta cheese, some sauteed onions and stuff like that. I love all that. Okay. I would do that first. And then if you want to do the coffee and juice after, really, it would just stabilize your blood sugar and um, cortisol levels. Why do they say to do juice on an empty stomach? I don't know. I don't agree with those people. Oh so my gosh, should be asking you'd have to you all ask this them. Time. <laughs> yeah. It's 50% of your cortisol is released in the first 30 to 60 minutes of you waking up. So you need okay. to stabilize that with healthy protein and healthy fat. Sugar, it spikes that and it causes chaos through the rest of the day. Oh my God. Here I thought I was doing a really good thing. If you're going to have like carby fruit things and juices, you should have those um, later in the day. And okay, okay. so to return to why do you do it on empty stomach? I do agree if you have fruit, for example, have yes. that as a snack on an empty stomach okay. between meals. Um, the sugars in fruit can disrupt the digestion of proteins and fats if you're having that with a meal. Okay, that I do do. And then coffee not on an empty stomach, right? I wouldn't do that, right? That's pretty. That's taxing to the adrenals. And uh, yeah, I, I would do coffee at least after you've had some proteins and fats to stabilize your cortisol. Okay. And then what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? Okay, very. I, was, I should have said that instead of juicing. But that's a good <laughs> one too. Uh, okay, I know I'm really going against the grain with this. A lot of... Um, you know, it's very trendy right now to mm -hmm. talk about fasting. And there's a lot of research coming out that's pointing to a lot of data that says it's supportive. So I can't I can't disagree with that. What I agree with is um, time restricted eating. Okay. So like uh, maybe eating your meals between eight and six, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Okay. And then having, you know, that time between 6 p.m. and the next morning to let the digestion just kind of finish its work and shut down for a while. OK. And going to bed without you know, a lot of digestive um, metabolic activity taking place because sleep is really more of a detoxification time. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you have a belly full of food because you ate at like 9 p.m. and went to bed at 10 p.m., yeah. you're not getting that detox in. So I, I don't want to say fast necessarily because I think in this day and age, most people are actually nutrient depleted mm -hmm. and fasting is like, you know, controlled starvation and depleting to that and weakening overall. I think mm -hmm. people need to nourish. But time restricted eating would be a great idea, like okay. that eight to six idea. Okay, I sort of naturally do that. I find that if I do eat past six or seven, I don't sleep well. Exactly. Yeah, it totally messes everything up. A few years ago, I actually did keto coupled with intermittent fasting. I was tiny. I was the skinniest I've ever been. But then once I got off of those, I gained more weight, and mm. it literally took me like a year to stabilize. Yeah, your body might have been thinking you're in this food scarcity climate. Yeah. And then when food came back, it was like, oh, my God, yeah, we got to double up on this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely doubled up. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to what we're eating, there's so many chemicals now in our food. And I think for people especially that are just starting out, it's extremely overwhelming, like everything else we've been talking about. If you had to only pick five chemicals or ingredients, I should say, what should you stay away from? Oh, my gosh. I know. That's I mean, hard. BPA, BPS, so any okay. of the plastics. Yeah. Mm, phthalates. Um, like corn syrup, is that? Oh, yeah, I see where you're going. Okay. Yeah, like any, like, because yeah. I only read ingredient labels on stuff. I don't yeah. look at calories. I don't look fat. I literally just read ingredient labels. Well, one thing I want to mention is a lot of people get duped into, like, um, this product is made with coconut sugar, and somehow people think that's not sugar. Like, it's still sugar. I know, and I use it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and so, like, it might be a little better than refined white sugar, but it's still sugar. So yeah. anything sugary, like, there's sugar in everything. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about how influential that is in your gut overgrowth. So, um, yeah, hidden sugars, right? Okay. Uh, sugar alcohols, coconut sugar. Like, there's a lot of um, products uh, or like the fake sugars. The fake sugars. Aspartame. Yeah, aspartame. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, the the sweeteners. Yeah. Um, anything you can't pronounce, anything you don't recognize. Just like everything. It's now. like everything. The simple <laughs> thing is like don't buy 
processed packaged foods that have boxes, bags, and labels. Yeah. If you buy whole real foods, produce, meat, fish, vegetables, fruit, nuts, and seeds, you don't have to read any labels. Right. That like simplifies it really fast. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you a few different categories one at a time. And I just want to know like your first thoughts on them. Like the first thing that come to mind. Okay. Okay. Salt. Oh, it's actually really good for you if you're eating the right salt. So okay. table salt has dextrose in it, which is sugar again, right? And oh, I didn't realize that was sugar. Yeah. So that's the oh. thing. So there's like a hundred different names for sugar Crazy. and they put them all on the label so you don't recognize it, yeah. right? So like table salt with sugar is bad, it's obviously. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like Himalayan pink salt, sea salt, those are really good for you and okay, yeah. important. Because they have minerals in exactly. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coffee, which we've kind of touched on a little bit, but I think if you get well sourced coffee, um, organic, like Purity is a good brand, okay. um, and then the Bulletproof brand. So you know, testing for mold is yes. a big deal. A lot of people have mold issues and don't know it. Coffee is a big source of that. So if you don't have adrenal issues, if you don't have thyroid issues, if you don't have fatigue issues, like a cup of black coffee before noon is fine if it's well sourced. What if I'm mixing it with a little bit of maple syrup and canned coconut milk? I think that's probably okay. That's okay. Yeah. I remember one time you did say, because I was like, I do maple syrup in my coffee every morning. And you were like, if that's it, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, if that's the worst thing you're doing. So <laughs> there's this spectrum, right? Like, if that's the worst thing you're doing, you're doing great. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, and if you are going to do sweeteners, what are the best ones to reach for? Monk fruit. Yeah, oh, but real okay. monk fruit. I was going to say, a lot of it's processed and full of shit. Erythritol. Yes. Yeah. They're all, okay, so most of them, like Lakanto, yeah. is all erythritol with a sprinkle of monk fruit and yeah. then they say it's monk fruit yep. but if you look in the ingredients it's mainly erythritol Ugh, which I is know. a sugar alcohol highly processed junk yes yeah. so where do you get real monk fruit uh, uh on my dispensary there's a okay, there's yeah. a brand called now i think i think it's called now okay, and it's like 100 percent it. organic monk fruit nothing else it doesn't matter if you get that brand but look at the ingredient list it should say monk fruit okay. and nothing else okay organic too organic yeah. yes i also i've got beehives so i have oh, nice. raw honey so that's okay right yeah raw honey has a lot of benefits okay. it's even antifungal right so yeah. um like i even tell my kids like i give them like a spoonful because it's supposed to be good for allergies right ab absolutely okay yeah so uh yeah in moderation honey is has a lot of benefit okay raw okay. local honey okay not just like the, yeah. in the bear, in the plastic that's been there for nine oh, years. God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is for all of my business owners or potential business owners. I want to talk to you guys about Shopify, which is my actual store platform that I use at Uncommon James. A question that I often get is what e-commerce platform do you use? And I have used Shopify from day one. What I love about them is that they've been able to scale and grow with the needs of Uncommon James as we've grown. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage, Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits or jewelry like me, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. The Shopify app on my phone is actually my most used app because not only do I, of course, love looking at our numbers for the day, but it's really helpful for me when I'm actually sitting down to design a collection because if I need answers about what jewelry is our top seller's right that second. I can just go to the app. They have different filters you can put in. So it makes it really easy to see what your top products are. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash cavalary, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash cavalary now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash cavalary. All right, guys, normally I find bras to be so uncomfortable and constricting. We all know that feeling. They're the first thing I take off when I get home. But Skims has changed that, you guys. You know I love Skims underwear, so I finally had to try their bras. And Skims is delivered again. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give. But what I wasn't expecting was how comfortable they are. Even the underwire bras I'm wearing all day. Definitely not the first thing I take off when I get home anymore. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear and bras for everybody. I love the no-show Belkinette bra from Skims. It's the sexiest bra I own. It provides the support, but keeps my natural shape and it's invisible under my clothing, which for me is the most important. Even better is that it's so comfortable. I literally don't even notice that I'm wearing it. So date nights just got even better. 
Gyms bras are made with innovative technology to give you the best shape and support. Plus, every bra is designed with the comfiest and softest materials, so you'll feel like you're wearing nothing at all. Skims offers a complete system of bra solutions for every need and style. Skims bras are available now in 62 sizes. They have 30A through 46H. Believe the hype, you guys. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims bras are now available at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know I sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select my show in the drop-down menu that follows. Let's chat about my favorite electrolyte company, Element. Element helps anyone stay hydrated without the sugar and other dodgy ingredients found in popular electrolyte and sports drinks. Electrolyte deficiency or imbalance can cause headaches, cramps, fatigue, brain fog, and weakness. Element is a zero-sugar electrolyte drink mix born from the growing body of research revealing that optimal health outcomes occur at sodium levels two to three times government recommendations. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Element is formulated for anyone on a mission to restore health through hydration and is perfectly suited for athletes, folks who are fasting, or those following keto, low-carb, whole food, or paleo diets. They are the exclusive hydration partner to Team USA weightlifting and many Olympic athletes. Around 30% of the NFL is drinking Element out of orange and green bottles. They have Navy SEAL teams, health experts, business leaders, everyday health people like moms, exercise enthusiasts, heavy sweaters, sauna sitters. Basically, anybody can use Element. Element has some new flavors. The new Element Chocolate Medley features chocolate mint, chocolate chai, and chocolate raspberry, and they're designed to be enjoyed hot. If salt is part of your hydration routine, the chocolate medley may be a great way to start or wind down your day. Go to drinkelement.com slash honest to receive a free element sample pack with any order when you purchase through my URL. They have no questions asked refunds, so you can try Element totally risk-free. If you don't like it, give it away to a salty friend, and they'll give you your money back, no questions asked. Again, that's drinkelement.com slash Okay, we already talked about this a little bit, but fruit, because fruit can be a little controversial. Some people are like, you can't stay away from it. It's so bad for you. But you're saying on an empty stomach, it's okay. Yeah, it. It's so funny what's controversial now. Even vegetables are controversial. <laughs> like, kale, we can't eat kale anymore. Right, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> oxalates and all this stuff. <laughs> no. So I never thought, like there's a big movement right now that is like super pro-sugar anti-vegetables. And I never, it's like we're living in an upside down world. I, I never know. thought I'd have to defend vegetables <laughs> and fight back on sugar. Right. Um, so fruit, I think is, um, I think people eat too much fruit, generally okay. speaking. I, I have very little fruit in my diet, like literally a few pieces a month. And oh, wow. Yeah. So it, it does have sugars. And again, it's on a spectrum. If you're replacing your Mountain Dew and Snickers with an apple, <laughs> right. like, good job. Win. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you're doing this thing that a lot of people do is like fruit is good for you. And then they make a smoothie with like this much fruit in it in the morning. Yeah. yeah. And then they eat like mangoes all day. Like that's a lot of sugar. <laughs> yeah. Glycemic load, messing with your blood sugar. Uh, so, you know, maybe a piece a day, okay. local in season, that's important. Okay. Like if you're in uh, the Midwest in January and you're eating pineapple, that's not like within nature's balance. Yeah. So um, like a piece a day on an empty stomach so it doesn't disrupt the protein and fat um, digestion. So fresh squeezed orange juice in the morning. Probably. I mean, again, on the spectrum like of treat. things. <laughs> yeah, that's I would I, maybe rather than like every single morning, maybe on Sundays when you're having like. Yeah bacon and okay. whatever. Okay. Oh, God, my whole morning routine is going to change now. Um. Well, you're doing great. So that's the other thing. If you are healthy and happy and like, and that's true, not you're yeah. living delusionally, right? <laughs> yeah. um, keep doing what you're doing. I work mainly with people who are chronically ill. So these right. are tips I give to people that are trying to dramatically change their life. Okay. Okay. Right. That makes sense. Okay. What about sleep? So important. Yeah. Maybe the most important thing behind stress. Um, and those are related in a lot of ways. So, right. um, how yeah, many, like how many hours should we be getting? Seven to eight would be good. Okay. If you're asleep before 11 p.m., that's really great. That's when the detox starts. From an Eastern perspective, there's a circadian clock. And oh, okay. 11 uh, to 1 and 1 to 3 are when the gallbladder and liver are doing all their work. And that's a main, major detox organ in your body. Oh, okay. So if you're awake after 11 p.m., the detox isn't really happening as well as it should. Okay, okay. 
All right. That's great. What I mean, can you get too much sleep? Like sometimes if I get nine <laughs> to 10 hours, I'm t more tired. Yeah, it's <laughs> interesting how that works. I, I would say in general, as a culture, we need more rest. So okay. I'd never try to talk people out of resting and sleeping. Okay. And your body should guide you. Like if you need to sleep nine or 10 hours that night, you yeah. pro probably has a good reason for it. Um, yeah, you may have just caught yourself in a different part of the sleep cycle if you wake up a little after that where you're a little groggy still. But right. by and large, yeah, like cool temperatures uh, in bedroom, keeping a, a, any, any light exposure to a minimum, getting electronics out of the bedroom, right? Yeah. Like all electronics, turn your yeah. Wi-Fi off. Um, you know, a, a sleep mask or earplugs if you're sensitive to light and sound. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then water. Got my, my I know. What I kind of water are you drinking? I love it. <laughs> this is a live water. They uh, service Southern California, Northern California, Austin, and Miami right now. Um, it comes from Opal Springs in Madras, Oregon, and it's totally untouched, right? Cool. So they just like bottle it and bring it to you. Um, there's no chemicals. They test it every few weeks for, you know, bacteria and contaminants. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's just straight from the source. So wow. you have a good one too, Mountain Valley Spring Water. Right, if you're going to do bottled, right, yes. this is one of the better ones. Just as good, right? Okay. So I also love Castle Rock out of yep. Shasta County. That's really good. So as long as it says spring water, like it says right at the okay. top, spring water. And if it's in glass yep. to avoid the BPA, BPS. Okay, okay. Good to know. Um, oat milk and nut milks. Oat milk is bad news for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, first of all, most of the oat milk brands are mixed with uh, vegetable oils, which are really gnarly, and usually some kind of sweeteners, which are, aren't great either. So uh, secondly, oats in general, although they don't have gluten, 80% of independently tested oats in the marketplace had gluten cross-contamination. Oh. I'm hugely against gluten for most people. Oh, wow. Uh, so you have to assume if you're having any oat products, you're having gluten as well. I did not know that. And glyphosate. They glyphosate. Are, look, yeah. I don't even know how to say it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're all basically contaminated with that, right? I, I think I think oats are maybe soy's number one and oats are number two for the most glyphosate exposure. Yeah. Wheat as well. Like these are top three for glyphosate exposure, which is a Oof. carcinogenic um, herbicide. Yes. And then what about nut milks? Well, you know, if you're at home making your own nut milk, yeah. that's pretty good. Good yeah. for you. I've done that and it tastes amazing. I make Brazil nut milk every single Yum. week. Yeah. yeah. So like do that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's actually really easy. I don't think people realize how easy it is. Yeah. Once you get the swing of things, yeah, it's not then so it's bad. A breeze. Yeah. yeah. Like Malk is a good brand too, mm -hmm. if you don't want to do it, because it's just, if you look at the ingredients, it's like organic almonds, water. Yeah. That should Filtered be the list. Water. Filtered water. Filtered like, water, yeah. right? Not like carrageenan Ugh, and all yes. these nasty thickeners and additives. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Or, I mean, like we were just talking about, I use the simple canned coconut milk too, and that's it. Yes. There's no crap yes. in it. The simple one. Yes. No yeah. guar gum. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. It's my favorite one. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Okay, and then... This might be a heartbreaking conversation, but alcohol. <laughs> it is a heartbreaking conversation. So in my work with patients, there's always the one thing that they don't want to do the most. And that's usually let go of caffeine, alcohol, sugar, or grains, or dairy. Okay. Those are the top things. And it's usually one or two of those things. And alcohol is a big deal. Um, I it, It's so ingrained in our culture, it's hard to talk about because um, we don't bat an eye at it. If it didn't exist and we just dropped it into society right now out of nowhere, it'd probably be a big uproar. Like, yes, what is this? That's so true. It, like, look at the research. This is horrible for everybody, right? <laughs> like, there's no amount of alcohol that's safe. There's a study that came out a few years ago in The Lancet that shows that. So, uh, you know, I know the New York Times is always putting out there, you know, red wine in moderation <laughs> has resveratrol and antioxidants. Like, you can get the resveratrol and antioxidants without the alcohol. Yeah. Alcohol causes leaky gut pretty much every time you drink it, oh. which then can cause systemic uh, inflammation. That's just one one example there are hundreds of reasons not to drink alcohol and it's like if you if you're getting on to this healing path and you want to be really serious about it the mm. first thing you should do is quit alcohol your life will completely change on so many levels physically but then socially and this is the part where people get hung up you'll be forced to do new things like right. instead of going to the bar you might go on a hike or right. you might do something healthier right and like I quit alcohol in my mid 20s oh, and wow. my whole life changed because of it. Wow. Like all these relationships I had that were based on going out to drink, yeah. they went away and I was like sad for a while. But then I had to replace them with new people and these right. were like healthy people. Right. And it, it has a snowballing effect that you can't really see uh, when you start. But over the years, if you stick with it, it just leads your life in a totally different direction. Yeah. I OK, so. We've actually had a conversation because you have said, like, I don't actually drink very much, but I will from time to time. I drink tequila, soda, 
with lime juice and jalapenos. And I think you've said to me, like, if you're going to do it, that's one of the better routes to go. But my question is, what is worse for you? Drinking, I don't know, let's say having one to two drinks three to four times a week or not drinking for like two weeks straight, but then going a little buck wild and having like seven to eight drinks one night. I think that is worse, is the latter. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, you're right. People will, I mean, all the time, I'll I'll meet with patients, I'll be like, you shouldn't drink alcohol. And they're like, okay, but I'm going to. So what should I, how should I do that, right? (laughs) And you're right. So Mm. the two things I'd recommend if you're going to drink, um, organic, sulfite-free, red wine, not from America, because America doesn't have the best laws about that whole process. Well, Italy has the DOCG label, on their wines that are low in sugar and all the things, that's the only kind of wine I can drink where I don't feel like shit the next day. Then that's a good thing yeah. to listen to your body, yeah. right? If mm-hmm. you don't feel like shit the next day, that's probably a good <laughs> sign. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do that. And then the really high quality tequila, like you were mentioning, mm-hmm. with no like mixers that have syrups and a bunch of junk in them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. But definitely don't go buck wild from time to time. It's a lot for your body to process all at once, right? Like the solution to pollution is dilution and you could apply that to alcohol as well. Like binging alcohol is quite overwhelming for your body. Yeah. If it's spread out in small doses, you can process it a lot easier. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. You would not approve of my Friday night then. <laughs> what were you doing? Well, I, this is, <laughs> my girlfriend just had a, her first baby. So we got our group of friends. We've been friends for 20 years and we all went out because it was our first night out from the baby. And it just, it was, we got after it. <laughs> well, you know, that's the, that's the thing, right? So uh, you generally follow a pretty healthy lifestyle, I know. Mm-hmm. And if that's the exception from time to time, you'll probably survive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> okay, my last question, and it's another semi-controversial topic. I want to know your thoughts on colonics and enemas. Mm. Are they beneficial? Do they, in fact, strip away all of the good bacteria? Yeah. What do you think? I think if you um, require colonics to function, right, mm. to have your bowel movements and to feel not bloated and all that stuff, there's a deeper imbalance that should be addressed. And that's where we'd run like the the stool test and the SIBO test to evaluate gut function. You shouldn't have to rely on colonics. If you uh, have a very well-performing GI system, like we've, we've tested you and everything looks good, and you want to do the colonics from time to time for whatever reason, mm-hmm. I don't think it's that disruptive. But I do have a lot of patients who come to me literally reliant on these yeah. things to function. And then enema is not as big of a deal because that's not going as far up into the colon where, like you said, like, what are they using? Um, what kind of water? Like, how clean is that water? Right. And, you know, can it disrupt the microbiome if it gets up there? Maybe. Um, the enemas are going much shallower, right? So uh, it's not going to be as disruptive. Um, and then, like, coffee enemas have a lot of benefit. It actually stimulates a lot of glutathione produ- oh, production. Oh, really? Yeah. And any way you can stimulate glutathione production, I'm a fan of. I will do them myself at my house, coffee enemas. There you go. Great. Your glutathione <laughs> well, should be yeah, a good place. We should recheck it. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much. My I think pleasure. this is going to be so great for so many people. And then tell everyone where they can find you, because I know everyone's going to want to book an appointment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So my website is peacefulmountainmedicine.com. And I'm on Instagram at Dr. Ryan Monahan. So D R R Y A N M O N A H A N. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. So great. Awesome. Yeah. I think people are going to love all of this information. Me too. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate you so much.